And just to make sure that we have a complete understanding of how we have to deal with electron jumps and the associated photons being either absorbed or emitted, uh, we're going to look at a lithium atom, and in particular, we're going to look at a doubly ionized lithium atom. And again, the reason why we have to ionize the atoms that are more complex than hydrogen is because if we don't, the equation becomes so insanely complicated that it would be almost impossible to work out. Matter of fact, even today in science, they haven't gotten a lot of good models that explain how things work when we don't have these uh, atoms ionized to kind of come up with a, a model for them. So, we're going to have a doubly ionized lithium atom, which means the two of the three electrons are already removed. There's only one left, and when that one electron jumps up and down in the orbits of a lithium atom, uh, they're either going to absorb or emit uh, wavelengths, or I should say photons with specific wavelengths. So, on this exercise, we're trying to find the wavelength of the photon that will be absorbed in order for an electron to jump from the second level up to the third level. So, in order to do that, we have to know what the energy level is for the second level, the energy of the third level, take the difference, and then find the associated um, photon. All right, using this equation, we can say that E sub 2 is equal to uh, 3 squared. Remember, the atomic number for lithium is 3 because it has 3 protons. And by the way, in case you didn't know, it has 4 neutrons within the nucleus. Turns out that with that particular geometry, the nuclear strong force works best if there's four neutrons in the nucleus rather than three. So nature made sure there's four neutrons there. And then we divide that by, of course, we're dealing with the second level, so this would be two squared times minus 13.6 electron volts. Okay, let's see what that is equal to. So we have 13.6 uh, times nine divided by four equals that would be minus 30.6 electron volts. So that's the energy level of the second level. So that would be minus 30.6 electron volts. Now we want to find the energy of the third level. So in lithium, so E sub 3 is equal to 3 squared divided by 3 squared times minus 13.6 electron volts. And that's easy, that's minus 13.6 electron volts. So the energy of the third level in lithium would be minus 13.6 electron volts. So the difference between the two, the delta E between 2 and 3 is equal to 30.6 electron volts minus 13.6 electron volts. And that looks like it is 27 electron volts, not 27, that's too much, 17 electron volts. There we go. Now. To find the associated electron, we say that the energy of a, of a, or I should say photon, the energy of a photon is equal to h times the frequency, which is equal to h times c over lambda. So therefore, lambda, the wavelength, going from 2 to 3, is equal to hc divided by the difference in the energy going from 2 to 3 by putting the wavelength over here and energy down there. All right, plug in the numbers. This is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds, multiply it times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, divide the whole thing by the difference in the energy, which was 17 electron volts, then of course we have to multiply it times the conversion, um, that would be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per 1 electron volt. All right, let's find out what the wavelength is of that photon that will have to be absorbed in order to, for the electron to jump from the second to the third energy level. So 6.626 e34 minus times 3 e to the 8 divided by 17 and divided by 1.6 e to the 19 minus and we get looks like 73.1 73.1 nanometers. So that would be ultraviolet radiation so for an electron to be jumping from the second to third level, we need to have a photon of this exact wavelength for it to provide the energy required to make that electron jump. And that's how we deal with electron jumps in more complicated atoms.